Right, this is uh, week three, session number one. I missed a few sessions because I had a slight bug, uh, been away as well, um, and work was quite busy. Um, but I feel pretty good, so this should be a good session, half an hour. Um, and let's see if I can get close to the 8.2 miles that I did um, in one of the half hour rides in week two, or week one, I think it was. Um, so here we go. So I'm starting with my three minute warm up um, on, a, on a high gear. So it's easy to spin. But today I'm going to try to, because I feel fairly good and fresh, um, because I've had the rest, I'm going to try to keep the cadence up quite high. So I'm spinning quite fast to begin with in the warm-up. Remember, I'm still at the beginnings of what I feel I have to do, which is to get fit to train properly. So although this is training, I don't feel I'm fit enough to, to really push it, as you'll see hopefully in the next coming weeks, when I actually start what I feel is actual training. Right, nine minutes, 50 seconds. Coming up to the 10 minute mark. And just reaching it now. And it's 2.7 miles, so multiply that by three. I'm looking at just over eight miles. So I'm on course for what I felt like today, which was I could achieve the eight miles, but still got a long way to go. And what I've got to be wary of is the effort I put in at the beginning it may just take its toll towards the end of the half an hour. Although, yeah, I'm aware it's only half an hour. But when you're trying to get fit, and it's just beginning, we're just starting to get fit. That last five, ten minutes of the allocated time is no different to if you're doing a two hour ride. And it's the last 15 minutes of that. So, trying to push the body to go through to another level now by keeping up this, this cadence, this speed and achieving the eight miles again. So, let's see where we are after 20 minutes. Quick check, coming up on 15 minutes now. We're done 3.9 miles, which is just below the four miles at the halfway mark, but I've been riding over gravel and wooden boards on this app, on Zwift, which in real life would slow you down, and it does, on, it does as well on the app. So but I've got some downhills coming later on, and hopefully I can make up that difference as we go through the ride. So just under four miles after 15 minutes, halfway through the ride. Right, coming up to 20 minutes now. And three, two, one. That's 20 minutes now, that's 5.3 miles. Divide that by two, 2.6. So around about 7.9. So still on track, but um, got to make sure that I keep this power up put up. So I'm just going up a 6% gradient now. So yeah, still on track. So this is where we are, another 10 minutes. Right, coming up to 28 and a half minutes gone. I'm on 7.9 miles already. Let's see where we are on eight miles. Right, eight, 28 and a half minutes, eight miles, minute and a half left, so much, much faster than my fastest time so far and my biggest range of miles. And that's with also around about 45 seconds where I had to turn the camera off and back on again because of the 30 minute limit on the recording. So I will be around about 8.2, 8.3. 
we've got one minute to go. Alright, 15 seconds to go. I'm on 8.4 miles, which is 0.2 faster than last time. But my previous best anyway. Five seconds to go. Can we get to eight and a half? Yeah. Eight and a half miles. That's 0.3 miles faster than uh, my previous best, which is quite a lot when you're trying to get fit. And when you're at that end, the range of training that you've got to do. So 0.3 is really, really good. Um, really pleased with that. And like I said, I had 45 seconds where I had to jump off the bike, switch the camera on and off. And then that probably took possibly 0.2 miles off my off my distance as well. So yeah, very, very good. It's like my two minute cool down now in really high gear, one cog down. I'm just spinning, just taking it easy. So yeah, so where I've had the time off, obviously the previous training had put the, the fitness in my legs. So I've now used that as well now to come back fresh after the rest. And I've just broken my record fairly easily. I'm not saying it was easy, but it's far from painful either. So I probably got a bit more in there as well. So the next couple of days, we do easier ride, rides and just recover a little bit. And then maybe three days time, push again. Um, Must I'm a little bit fresher again. But yeah, eight and a half miles in 30 minutes. Really pleased with that. Right, so week four, session number three. Did a second session as well, uh, half an hour. It's gonna be half an hour as well. We had a couple of days off, again, busy at work. Um, so I should be fairly strong, fairly fresh. So it should be a fairly good time, hopefully. We'll see. So as usual, three minute warm up. Um, now I'm the second cog down, quite a high gear, or quite a low gear, I think, well, it should be in cycling, so I'm just going to go down another cog, because I feel a little bit stronger with all the training I've done, so there's a progression straight away there, and if you feel like that, then if you feel strong, then start a little bit higher up rather than sticking to what you've done for the previous three or four weeks. So you can see the benefits are already there for me now. And even this feels quite easy, so... But I'll keep it on that for the moment. Coming up to 10 minutes. Let's see where we are. Ten minutes now. 2.6 miles, so that's one third. So multiplying it by three, looking at between seven and a half and eight miles. But hopefully that should catch up as the ride goes on like we normally do, going downhill and stuff. Currently in gravel, coming up to some wooden boards on a pier. And again, it just slows you down because generally that's what would happen naturally when you're out riding properly in real life. So, yeah, it's good, I feel good. Um, I'm pushing it because I feel good. And uh, let's see where we are after 15 and 20 minutes. Right, coming up to 15 minutes. And I'm on 3.8 miles. So I might find out by two, 7.6. But as always on this ride, when I'm on the downhills, I will catch up a little bit. So I'm still hoping to hit over eight miles. So 15 minutes gone, 3.6 miles, which is around about 7.2, if 
we double it. But I'm looking to, to catch up over the next 15 minutes or so. Right, coming up to 20 minutes, 5.1 miles. I'm just going up a 6% gradient, just making sure I stay in a high, high gear. Um, <clears throat> so 5.1 miles, so looking at, divide that by two, I'm looking at 2.5, 2.6. So looking at 7.7-ish .7 at the moment. So with these downhills coming up, should now be able to catch up with the eight mile marker. We're still feeling quite good. That was quite a tough hill, but here we go with the downhills. Right, I've got 45 seconds to go. I just reached the eight mile mark, so it shows you catch up. So when it looked for so long, it was going to be around about 7.6 miles. I'm now with 30 seconds to go. 8.1 so you do catch up on the ride it is realistic but now I'm not going to ease off I'm going to try to push it all the way across the 30 minute barrier see how far I can go I think 8.2 is the highest I went before just reach that so let's see what the actual figure is at the end when I finish I'm coming up to it now and that's 30 minutes so I'll end the ride and it was 8.3 miles in 30 minutes, 3 seconds. So I'm now going to do my cool down, my 2 minute cool down, go down to just the second cog, or go up to the second cog and just roll for 2 minutes, nice and relaxed. So I felt good. I felt as though I could beat the record um, or come close to my current record of when I've been back in training and it looks like I've either done it or come very close but yeah it's been a good morning. Right session a uh, week three session three and for the next couple of sessions I'm just going to try something different um, this one I'm going to try a workout, um, two reasons, one, it's time to try doing a workout um, and also I just want to try the test the trainer out a bit more, I'm not 100% sure whether it's picking up the, the, the correct tension, especially in the, the higher gears, so I'm just going to try that, so I'm doing a three minute warm up at the moment. Um, we will begin to in a second. Now the warm up, the, the workout I'm going to do, the 30 minute one that I've designed before, and it includes the warm up in it as well. So, um, I'm just going to go into it now. Going down the flat route. Um, I tend to do my workouts on a flat route. Uh, just to make it simpler, so three minute warm up and I'm just testing the trainer to see if it reacts to what the workout should be so let's see how we get on also I'm trying to control the camera with my phone at the moment so I'm just testing that out as well um, because of the 30 minute recording limit on the phone uh, on the camera, sorry um, so instead of just getting off the bike, I can now control the camera from my phone and stay on the bike. So I can just switch it off and switch it back on again. Um, and then go into a second period of 30 minutes, so to speak. This is a 30 minute warm up, a 30 minute workout. Um, it's got four segments in the main part. It's got a three minute warm up and a two minute cool down. And then four segments where they run about two minutes 15 each and a certain wattage. So at, a warm, at the moment, the warm up is telling me to go at 65 watts. Um, 
So it tells you in this particular workout the wattage, the output, the energy um, that I need to put in to keep up with the, the workout details. So I've got um, an app that connects through wireless and Bluetooth to the camera. I've got it on my phone here. So I'm actually looking at myself on there, but more importantly, I can control the camera from this. Like I said, I don't need to get off the bike um, and then get back on again, which is a pain, to say the least, on the, especially on the 30 minute recording limit. I've got an actual, I've got an, another camera, which I'm gonna start using as well. And it hasn't got a limit on it, so, this would just be for this particular instance here. Right, coming up to the end of the three minutes, warm up. Just come to the end of the first 180 watt section and still not sure about the trainer. Seems to fluctuate quite a bit. It's hard to keep a steady rhythm because of that so something I'm gonna to have to look into but I was uh has a good couple of minutes of going at a certain power output now I'm in a section of I do 90 watts so half of that so I can just roll along and recover before the next effort So that, eight, that 180 watts plus this 90 watt section will be part one and then part two starts with the next 180 watts. So it's four minutes at 90 watts, two minutes 15 at 80 watts, at 180 watts. So you can see the logic behind it. So you work hard for two minutes 15 and then recover for four minutes ready to put the effort in for the next section. I've just reached two miles after six minutes 51. It, it'll be interesting to see how far I, I can go in this half an hour. I've been in eight miles before. So I'm going to see where or how far I can go doing this different type of training or a workout. So just like my second uh, stage, 180 watts. It seemed easier to go at 90 watts. It seemed to be more stable at that. Whereas this, 180 watts is more difficult to sustain at a, at a sort of a level output. It's jumping between 150 and that 190 sometimes. So yeah, it's very difficult, it's just got up to turn on 11, so it's really jumping around. So it looks like it needs to be looked at a little bit more closely and I have to open it up and have a look inside. As it suggests on YouTube, you may have to do with this. But it's a bit disconcerting when you're trying to put in a level effort and with a wheel on trainer, I could do that with this really jumping around it's also difficult finding the correct gear to make sure you reach the power output either go up to 180 or drop down to 90 so I think I've got the 90 watt I'm the, I'm the full cog down, but 181 is more difficult. I tend to go up, down another two cogs, so six cogs down on the nine on the nine gear cassette. So it takes a bit of getting used to. Just got to 
14 minutes 20 and I've just reached the four mile mark which is interesting because I'm not quite at 15 minutes which is halfway and I'm already well ahead of where I would have been just on a normal ride so from a workout point of view the speed seems to be a bit more realistic even if the output power is, is a little bit jumpy so coming up to 15 minutes now which is halfway 4.2 miles which is multiplied by 2 is 8.4 so that's going to be further than I've done just on a normal ride where I thought I'd been pushing it so very interesting let's see if we can get to about 8.4 Coming up to the third section in 10 seconds. Start another 180. So I'll drop down, I'll drop up to, go up two gears now. And straight away, if you can hear that tone, it tells me to go up to 180. And yeah, it's diffi definitely difficult staying at that level. Also in Zwift, when you do a workout, um, gradients don't, kick in so you're literally running riding on flat um, so I'm a 3% gradient at the moment but it doesn't recognize that when you're doing a workout so everything's on a flat flat trajectory so to speak which is good because it gives you a better idea of the time That section was definitely a lot harder. So, another way to describe this workout is either fart leg training or interval training. The intervals being periods of real hard work to push your body beyond what you've been doing before. And then in between, there are periods of recovery where you recover ready for the next effort or push. So I'm now in a four minute recovery, getting ready for the final section. But yeah, I can definitely feel it. So workouts are important. They make training on Zwift a lot more interesting as well, because you've got to push. Um, so it keeps your mind occupied rather than just sitting there um, doing half an hour or 45 minutes or whatever. Now I mentioned at the beginning that next couple of sessions I'm going to do something a bit different. So, so the first one is this workout and then tomorrow where I've been doing half an hour at eight miles, instead of saying I'm going to do 45 minutes, I'm going to ride for 10 miles. Um, if you can remember, if you can try to remember, 3.2 miles is approximately 5k, 6.4, 10, 9.6 is 15k and so on, 12.8 is 20k, so 10 miles is around about the 15, 16 kilometer range, so instead of doing another 15 minutes I'm going to do another 2 miles tomorrow, so I'll do 10 miles, see how long that takes me. And if it takes me less than 45 minutes, then I'll go 45 minutes from then on. So we'll see. But today's a workout and tomorrow's going to be 10 miles. Right, coming up to the final push. 180. The creaking you can hear, I think, is either the saddle or the pedals. So that need to be looked into. Hopefully you can't pick it up too much on the, on the microphone here. A little bit annoying for me. All right, final push on the 180. See if I can keep it at a more level power output. Definitely feel it though. I'm in the seventh gear, which is hard work in itself but I've got to do that to try to reach 
180 watts with the extra resistance it gives me. So I'm really struggling, I'll be fair. I'm sort of more around about the 160, 170 mark at the moment. Dropping down to 150 when I'm really feeling it. Got 45 seconds of this. That's a hard bit of this ride done, but this is tough. <coughs> this is where you got to dig in. Let's see if you can get to that level. So I'm pushing it and I'm back up around about 175, 180. Right, so I've got four minute recovery from that, then a two minute cooldown. Yeah, that was tough, but it's doing me good. It's getting me fitter and stronger. <clears throat> so when someone's training in there, so it's tough, we're enjoying it really. So 90 watts for four minutes and then two minute cool down. And what Zwift does, it takes you through the the levels so it starts at 90 drops down to around about 30 or 40 so it's cooling you down properly so you're spinning slower and slower and your heart rate slowly coming down my heart rate is around about 125 at the moment which is pretty good considering the effort i just put in it probably went up to around about 130 i would have thought looking at the graph yeah it jumped quite a bit on that four minute effort just now which is normal, it's what you want. Right, I'm in a two minute cool down period now. And it's asking me to go 135 watts. 28 minutes gone, I'm nearly eight miles already. So, eight miles now, 28, 20. So, it's a lot further than I would have gone on a normal half an hour ride. It'll be interesting to see what the final figure is. We, I reckon about 8.4 earlier on. I don't think it's going to be far off that. So Zwift is now telling me from 135 it's gone down to 115 watts now. So every few seconds that will drop. So we must take you through a slowing down spin. It's now down to 100 watts. It's now down to 90 watts. So that's 135. And in less than a minute, it's gone down to 90. So it takes you all the way down. <sighs> so you recover your legs and your breathing as well. And the heart rate's dropping only slightly though at the moment. Down to 80 watts now with 35 seconds to go. So I can take the pressure off the the power 65 watts now 25 seconds to go and spinning very very slowly i've just reached 8.4 miles so yeah it's going to be close to 8.5 last 10 seconds 55 watts is the output and that's it i'm done Eight and a half miles. So that's pretty good. So that's with the cool down built into it as well, which is good. So now I don't have to do the extra two minutes at the end. You can do if you want, depends on how you feel. I've done eight and a half miles on a half an hour ride doing a workout. And the previous best was about 8.2. So um, the workout has been good for all sorts of reasons. But the, the interval training, I can feel my legs now. It's definitely helped. And hopefully that will help me to improve my fitness even quicker. Okay, so that's session three done in week three.